Hi everyone, how are you? This is going to be a fun video. I'm going to talk about how to open a pool hall. And if you see my other videos, it's kind of, there's a lot of similarities between how to open a bar, how to open a hookah lounge, but there's a little bit of a nuance here, right? The pool hall has a different monetization dynamic where like, you know, obviously you need more space for the tables. So your rent is going to be driven up. Um, but at the same time, uh, I think on average people pay more and there is more to do in your bar. So you have more ways to differentiate yourself. So if people want to play, people want to play pool. Uh, they can do it in your bar. So you have a way extra angle to, from which you can market your business, but all the other kind of sections of the business plan and how you start this business are pretty similar, right? You, you know, let's talk about it. So there's the product, which is the pool hall or bar with pool tables. Uh, but kind of enough of a bar that it's like almost a game bar, not a uh, bar first, but bar second, games first. Then there's the marketing and then there's the finances, right? So let's talk about it all. Uh, so if you have games, you know, you can have a pool table only. If you have a college crowd, you know, in your neighborhood that you want to kind of open your place, you know, you might just want to have other games like Scrabble, right? Um, you might want to have ping pong tables, like, you know, because they're not necessarily pool players, right? Um, pool is more like, you know, if you just want to get a certain type of crowd, but if you have like a college crowd or you just want to have a, make a fun place for people to go, then maybe having a multiple kind of, um, activities like darts, scrabble, checkers, chess, you know, uh, it doesn't take a lot of space for checkers, chess, scrabble, you know, it just takes a table, a special kind of table, right? You can play like a square sort of thing. Uh, and they can get a drink and they can rent out the board. So you make money from the board and the drink and they kind of, uh, there's more reasons for people to come there. And, you know, if they want to play pool, you know, you, you, then pool is like a kind of, you, you make a lot of money per, half an hour per hour, you know, in Scrabble, you don't make a lot of extra money, but you sort of, as long as people are sitting there with their drink, you might as well get them to pay for that thing that they're doing. And it gives you a reason to get them into your place. So the marketing is really good there. Like the marketing, it's like you have all the best uh, marketing kind of um, incentives for people, for people to come there. Uh, the only, the only marketing incentive that you're missing is that usually other kind of bars, they're like, you know, people go there to meet the opposite sex. But if you have a pool hall or a game kind of a bar, uh, people, are, people are more likely to go with their existing friends and stay within, and play within their existing groups. So it's the only thing you're missing there. So the marketing is really good here. And if you've seen my other videos, here's how to also market your bar. Uh, definitely list on, listed on uh, local service sites. Definitely have a website for it. Definitely um, sign up for something Google, called Google Local, which will put you on a little Google map in searches. Uh, definitely um, try to get press, right? Try to get like, because you have such a unique business here, like if you, if you just have a pool hall, uh, it's okay. But if you can give, give it like a twist, like a really fun place, like a, for people to go, then local bloggers will write about, maybe local like bigger sites will write about and cover you. And what that does, it gives you more exposure on the web. And by the way, their pages are way more likely to rank than your website because they're just so much bigger and they can drive a lot of traffic to you. You won't even ever know it because, uh, People never will, t will never tell you, oh, I saw your bar and they'll, they'll just come in and they'll buy your drink and you'll never know it. But really, um, try to get local press coverage. Um, it, it's going to be a huge driver um, for you uh, of, of customers. Um, but of course, you know, it, it's easy to market this kind of a business. I mean, it is, it, it, it's almost like the, it has all the, almost all the best ways, all the best kind of things of, in marketing in it. But what's challenging in this business is the finances. The finances for this kind of business are always brutal because, you know, the rent is really expensive. 
the remodeling is pretty expensive. Pool tables are going to be expensive. Uh, the, the salaries you have to pay people, the licenses, right? All that. And um, so what you have to do, first you got to understand how much money you need to raise. And, you know, there's the amount you need before you start, where you're getting your licenses, you're starting remodeling, you're getting the space, you're hiring maybe a few employees. But then there's the real difficult part where you have a lot of expenses when you start, like the employee salaries, you know, uh, all the ongoing stuff, the rent, you know, stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot. And you just project that out to like maybe 12 to 16 months to give yourself enough runway to become, you know, um, break even or profitable. And of course, as you start your business, your cost will be offset by the revenue. And you have to project that um, based on similar t businesses in that area. And which brings me to a point that you should get people on your team who have already started this kind of a business. Um, on your team, there should already be someone who started this kind of a business and who can tell you like what to expect and how to project things. Because you certainly need those kind of members, uh, mentors or people on your team who know this kind of stuff. Uh, and of course, ideally, you need an investor to put, to really believe in that business, right? To really, really say, hey, this is going to work. I see how it's going to work. And to do that, what you have to do is outline a really solid financial picture and the marketing plan picture for them to get them excited, right? Because this, in every part of the world almost, there's a lot of wealthy people, not like a lot, but enough. Uh, so your resourcefulness have to, will have to come in and like finding that person first of all, right? Getting to that person and then getting them to sit down and getting them to be like, wow, I see it. That's going to be a great business. I see how you're going to market it. I see the potential, right? So you got to get really pressed on the marketing and the financials have to be really solid and there has to be a really clear picture of how this business is going to be a huge success. Um, and of course, investors are not the only game in town. You can raise money with donations, loans, grants. You can be creative, but it's easy to get an investor. I mean, if you can get an investor, it's not easy, but if you can get an investor, uh, God, it will make your life easier, <laughs> right? Um, most of the time, because it's really a lot of money to raise. Um, and by the way, the investor will want to see that you have a really at least one person who's created such a business in the past very successfully. Which brings me to another point, is that very often the best kind of investors are ones who already have invested or own successful bars. So you know where to look, right? You don't have to use that much resourcefulness because you know where to look. Find the owners of the other bars. They're the best mentors for you, right? They want to invest in more bars probably. So that's my recommendation for how to write a business plan for a bar, uh, for a hookah lounge, or uh, a pool hall or a game bar, or a bar, uh, and how to actually start that business and how to get the resources that you need. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. And if you are, of course, starting this kind of a business, um, I created business apps that help you plan and start your business. They, they cover business ideas, business planning, marketing, and fundraising, and they're available on problemio.com. Uh, and if you can search for Problemio in any of the other app stores like Android, iOS, Kindle, you'll find the apps there as well. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next videos. Bye. Oh yeah, and subscribe to this channel. Did I mention that? Subscribe. Bye.